Good morning. Um, I appreciate being invited back again, Scott. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who showed up, even though you knew I was going to be here this morning. Um, I hope I do better with my message than I did singing that song that I didn't know along with everybody else. Um, that was a little bit of a challenge. But anyway, it did have a good message. It really did. Uh, I'd like to start this morning with prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to join together this morning to be reminded about your encompassing and overarching love for all of us. And God, I just pray that you will guide me this morning as I speak, but I also pray that we will, we will be able to touch hearts this morning, that, that you will give us insight, that you will give us wisdom. And I just thank you, God, for, for this church and for all these people gathered here today. In your precious son's name I pray, amen. Real, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but it's one of those days. Real isn't how you are made. It's a thing that happens to you. That's a quote from the book, The Velveteen Rabbit. That was written in um, 1922 by Marjorie Williams and illustrated by William Nicholson. And I'd like to repeat that quote from that book. Real isn't how you are made. It's a thing that happens to you. What does it mean to be real? And have you ever asked yourself, am I real? Now, the quote also goes on to say that when you are loved very much and for a long time, then you become real. Loved by whom? This sounds to me like perfect love. It would have to be to be real, wouldn't it? And I'm going to apologize right here before I go any farther. If you picked up one of these this morning, on the inside of it, there's a list of the scriptures I'm going to be using this morning. And I made a change at the last minute, and the very first scripture is not on here because it was already printed. That's not Scott's fault. That's something I did. So we're going to start with Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. People have written entire books about God's love, and there's no way that I could ever cover that whole topic in this conversation. But I want to focus today on one small facet of God's love, redemption. Redemption is the act of being redeemed, given value, being saved or delivered from sin or its consequences, an exchange for something of value. And those rescued from sin with a ransom are redeemed. Now, when I hear the word ransom, my mind immediately goes to kidnapping. Have you ever stopped to think about how we are kidnapped by sin? Let's think back to the days many years ago when people used to collect and save SNH green stamps. Do any of you remember SNH green stamps? Oh, please raise your hands. Oh, good, some of you do. <laughs> Ruth is like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, when you purchase from certain stores, you got according to how much you spent at the store. You got sheets of green stamps, like people nodding their heads, that's good. Um, and you also got books to put those green stamps in. Now, when I was a child, my job was to tear off the green stamps so that they would fit on the page of the book and lick those on the back until your tongue was like stuck to the top of your mouth and lick those on the back and put them in that book. Well, along with the green stamps and the books, you also got a catalog. And in the catalog, were the pictures of all the things you could purchase with those green stamps. And, and so when I got the books, all those stamps licked in there and got the books all ready, we would gather up all the books and we'd jump in the car and we would head to the Green Stamp Redemption Center. Okay, <laughs> it's always like, yeah, <laughs> I've been there, I've done that. Um, now, and when you walked in the store with the green stamps, immediately they had value because you were in the Green Stamp Redemption Center. Now, you could have taken those books to any other store and walked in the door 
and they weren't worth anything. They were only worth maybe using for kindling for a fire or something like that. But in the Green Stamp Redemption Center, they were, they were worth something. Okay, so then that makes me think about, like us, those stamps by themselves held no value. No matter how many you had, they were worthless on their own in those books. However, the people at the Green Stamp Redemption Store had the ability to give them value. Now, this is a simplified way of explaining what redemption is. And I can't tell you, you know, I looked at the word redemption a lot of times and thought, I just really wonder what that actually, what does that actually mean? And all of a sudden, green stamps just popped into my head a few years ago. And I'm like, perfect. I know exactly what it means to be redeemed, to be nothing and given value. But it's what this example is one that a lot of us can relate to. Okay, and in the story of the Velveteen Rabbit, he was not real. He was not worthy until he was much loved. The love of someone else gave him value. Is anybody else in here familiar with that book? Some of you are not. Okay. That love made him real. Now, I'm not worthy because I'm Linda Gentry, the most powerful man in the world, whoever that may be, is not worthy because he's the most powerful man in the world. We can give everything we have to the poor. We can spend every day helping others. We can know the Bible inside and out. And on our own, on our own, we are still unworthy. We are still sinners. We are no different than a pile of green stamps laying on a table. To me, redemption is simply the act of giving worth to something something, or in this case, giving worth to people who have no worth on their own. The question now becomes, how do we become redeemed? As the words to the song Redeemed by Big Daddy Weave say, it seems like all I can see was the struggle, haunted by ghosts that live in my past, bound up in shackles of all my failures, wondering how long this going to last? Then you, you, you being who? God. You look at me at the prisoner and you say to me, stop fighting, son, a fight that's already been won. Can you relate to those words? I sure can. Do you find yourself caught up in that repetitious cycle of doing all you can to say and do the right thing? And maybe you're successful for a few days. Maybe you're even successful for a week, and then all of a sudden you mess up, and you have to start over again. We have, we have been kidnapped by sin. We are prisoners in a very real sense of the word. The song tells us to stop fighting a fight that's already been won. But won by whom? Certainly not me. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. The fight has already been won by God. It is only through God's love for us that we have worth. And it's only through the ransom paid by Jesus that we have been redeemed. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, oh, I've done nothing to earn my redemption. There's no way God loves me that much. Well, you would be right, and you would be wrong. We are not loved by God because of anything we've done or we haven't done. And sometimes that's really hard to remember, isn't it? We are loved by God because of who he is, not because of who we are. We are loved by God because of what he has done. We are his children. Our value is not based on us. It's based on God. It's based on the love and the sacrifice of Jesus. When you bring home a newborn from the hospital, has that child ever done one thing to make you love them? Nope. 
so far they probably you've probably been spit up on you probably had to change a dirty diaper you probably I don't know the list goes on and on but absolutely nothing to make you love that child and they're probably not going to do anything to make you love them you don't love them because of who they are you love them because you wanted them in your life you wanted them in this world they they were conceived in love and they were brought into this world in love not because of something that they're going to do or not going to do it's the same way with god god is your parent he is our parent he brought us into this world because he wanted us here every one of you here is here not just in this church but on this earth because god wanted you here now we all know the easter story quite well we know that jesus was physical proof that we have been redeemed then the, the ransom for our sins was paid with jesus's blood but have you ever stopped to think about the fact that when jesus left the heavenly realms he knew exactly what was ahead for him he didn't come here expecting it to be a free ride I'm guilty of thinking about Jesus at the beginning when he was born in the manger. That's kind of how I picture Jesus on earth. But his earthly, but his earthly story has a beginning, but his heavenly story has no beginning. And that's hard to fathom, isn't it? That there, there was no beginning. It, it, the earthly story began with God deciding that, oh my goodness, look at these people that I've loved and I've created, and I've, and I've put them on the earth, and I have purpose for them, and what is happening? I have to do something to save them. Jesus was sent here to save us. He came here knowing what he was going to have to do, but he was sent here to save us. There is not any love as unconditional or as genuine as the love God gave us in the gift of his Son, our Redeemer, Jesus, the one who gives us worth, the one who fulfilled the following scriptures in Psalm 49, verse 7, no man can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for him. The Bible makes it quite clear that we cannot redeem our own lives or the lives of others. We cannot love someone into heaven nor can we earn our way into heaven. Now, this, this brought to mind a story that I have to share with you. About 20 years ago, the Mormons built a new tabernacle in Nauvoo. And before the tabernacle opened, you were allowed, the public was allowed to go through the tabernacle. And we went, and we went through the tabernacle. And in this huge room in the tabernacle was a bowl I kid you not, that bowl would have filled up the sanctuary. It was huge. And it had these big lions. Wasn't it lions, Bill, that held it up? Okay, it had these big lions underneath it that held it up and a set of stairs that went up into it. Do you know what that was? That was a baptistry so that you could be baptized for somebody who had already died and you were afraid they didn't get to heaven. I, yeah, people are shaking their head. I was floored. I, I've never forgotten that. I was absolutely floored that people actually think you can do that. That you can be baptized for somebody who, Scott just stood here last Sunday and said, if you don't make that choice now, once you're gone, you're done. Well, he said it more gracefully than I did. But anyway, <laughs> basically, that's the truth. And that just floored me that people actually thought, people actually believe that you can do that. So, once again, then I go back to our church attendance, our good deeds, our loving, giving hearts. None of those can be a ransom for our sinful lives. None of those are going to get us into heaven. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, But when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons, and I would also add daughters to that. 
And then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on all of us with his wisdom and understanding. Did you catch that? He lavished his grace on us, and it wasn't accidental. He didn't say a teaspoon for you, a teaspoon for you, oh, a tablespoon for you because you know your Bible. No, he lavished his grace on all of us. One of my favorites in the scripture that Scott shared this morning was out of 1 Peter, and we're going to repeat it because I think it bears repeating. For you know that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you are, were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Now, I like study Bibles because I think they help to unpack Scripture and they break it down. And sometimes they even uh, relate Scripture to, to our times now. And I like that. And in my study Bible for the New King James Version, I learned that resent redemption was a technical term used for money to buy back a prisoner of war. I didn't know that. Here it is used as the price to pay to buy the freedom of one in bondage of sin and under the curse of the law, which would be eternal death. The price paid to a holy God <clears throat> was the shed blood of his son. Now that alone makes me stop and ponder what Jesus did for us on the cross. Stop fighting the fight. It's already been won. I'm taken aback by one part of that scripture that just, I don't know, I've read that scripture several times because it is one of my favorites. And this had never really jumped out at me before. But did you catch the part in there about saying that silver and gold are worthless? They're worthless. And I'm thinking, because it says, let me back up here. It says, perishable things such as silver and gold. And I'm thinking, our economy is based on silver and gold. Some people base their whole lives on silver and gold. It's going to get burned up with everything else. It's worthless. So why not base your life on the promises of God? Now, how do we live like redeemed people. Well, Scott stole a little of my glory this morning. <laughs> it was only fair because I've done it to him more than once. Um, how do we live in a way that acknowledges the fact that we were worthless and then God gave us value? When Christ died on the cross and was resurrected. There again, we don't have to keep fighting. Jesus shed his blood to release us from bondage. I think that if I was a victim of kidnapping, I would be forever grateful to whoever paid, if anybody would, whoever paid my ransom. So it seems to me that we should be eternally grateful to the one who paid our ransom with his life. We should live lives that show gratefulness to the one who paid our ransom, the one who redeemed us. As Paul tells us in Titus 2, 11 through 14, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Everybody's gotten the same opportunity. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Hmm, pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Be grateful and do what's good. 
So I'm telling you, just as in the Velveteen Rabbit, <clears throat> real is something that happens to you when you are really loved. In our case, really loved by God. I'm telling you because I know that it's true. Because Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. I'm telling you that you can take it to the bank in place of your silver and gold. That redemption is something that was conceived by God, carried out by Jesus, and claimed by us. The chorus of the song Redeemed and Big Daddy Weave says, I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be. Oh God, I'm not who I used to be. Jesus, I'm not who I used to be because I am redeemed. Thank you, redeemed. Now there is an enemy out there who doesn't want you to believe that you are redeemed. There is an enemy out there who, who wants you to believe that Everything you've ever done wrong is in some kind of a big account, and he just likes to carry it around on your back and just keep reminding you over and over and over and over and over of all the mistakes you've made, <clears throat> of all the times that you have tried to, to do what's right, and you failed, and you failed, and you failed again, and you failed again, and you failed again, and he's right there. I, sometimes I picture Satan sitting on my shoulder going, hey, you did it again. You messed up. See, you're worthless. You're absolutely worthless. You messed up. No, I'm not worthless. You aren't worthless. You are redeemed. You have value. You have value. Okay, now we knew from the minute I shared that quote at the very beginning that we cannot love ourselves enough to be real. Other people, no matter how much they love us, cannot love us enough to make us real, to redeem us. And you know, I'd like to add one more thing in here. Saying, going around saying, oh, I'm Scott. You've seen Scott do this too. Oh, I'm unworthy. Oh, I'm worthless. Oh, I can't do anything right. Oh, all I ever do is make mistakes. Eeyore, 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 over and over and over, okay? Till your tail falls off. Um, what you're actually saying there is, you're not saying that you're unworthy. You're saying that God is unworthy because... You're saying he's not to be believed because God believes in you. He believes that you have value. He loves you. He loves you so much. He doesn't care about all those mistakes that the enemy keeps reminding you about that are hanging on your back. If you have been redeemed, if you have taken your sins to God, if you have laid your sins at the foot of the cross, Satan can't touch you, only if you let him, only if you let him. Okay, so let us leave this morning with gratitude in our hearts. Let us be grateful to God with a renewed determination to live like redeemed people. No more Eeyore, be Winnie the Pooh, okay? Live like, a, like you've got this little balloon and you're just floating around with this little balloon all the time and you're just happy because you have every reason to be happy. To be real because we are loved by God is so important. And be confident because, as Job said in chapter 19, verses 25 and 26, and this scripture just gives me goosebumps. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. <clears throat> and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh... I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me. Doesn't that just give you goosebumps? But especially when you stop and remember that when Job was saying this, his skin was covered with boils. That had to be just an horribly, just horribly unending pain that he went through. Yet he was unshakable in his faith, in his Redeemer, and to say that even after his skin was destroyed, he will see God in his flesh. 
this scripture tells me two things about heaven. We'll have flesh and we'll be able to see our Redeemer. It also tells me that there will come a day when Jesus will stand on this earth. And he's going to look for those people who have been redeemed, standing with him. And by George, you're going to be there. Now we have, <clears throat> excuse me, no guarantees in this life apart from the promises of God. If you're questioning where you are spiritually today, now's the time to bow down to God, <clears throat> cry out to him, and maybe even shed a tear. And I have to tell you, in the Velveteen Rabbit, the Velveteen Rabbit got thrown out in the trash. And those of you who know the story, the Velveteen Rabbit got thrown out in the trash. And he looked out, and he saw these real rabbits hopping around. And he shed a tear. And where he shed a tear, a flower came up. And he became real because he had been loved so much. God doesn't care if you shed tears in front of him. God, God knows those tears. He feels those tears. So if you're at a place today and you're not quite sure what that place is, now's the time. Bow down to God. Pour out your heart to God. Cry out to God and say, hey, you know what? I messed up. But I'm not done. I'm not done because God isn't done with you. He's not done with you. And so God has a plan for us. He conceived it. Jesus carried it out, and now it's up to us to claim it, if we haven't already. If you have claimed it, then by George, when you go out these doors this morning, I want you to live like it. I want you to live like you are valued, because you are. I don't care how much you weigh. I don't care how much hair you've lost. I don't care how, you know, the thing about getting old is, hair starts popping up in places where you didn't even know you had places. I hate that. And, you know, it's like, what is this? Where did that come from? I'm not supposed to have that there. Okay? It, we, it doesn't matter how much that happens. It doesn't matter how many times you have said the wrong thing, done the wrong thing. Because God has redeemed you. He has given you value. Your value is not what you see looking back at the mirror in you. Your value is what you see reflected back to you from heaven. That's your value. So if you haven't claimed it, now's the time to do it. Okay, I'd like for us to pray. Dear God, how can we ever begin to thank you for the way you have given us such perfect, perfect love? The way you brought us to this world out of your love and the way you continue to live in us and around us, going ahead of us and going behind us and standing beside us in your love. Only in your love, God, are we given value. We thank you for redeeming us. We thank you for releasing us from that prison of sin. And God, we just pray that as we leave here this morning, we will have a glow about us that says to anybody who we meet, look at me, I'm redeemed, and you can be redeemed too. God, we thank you for your word, which leaves no questions about our value. <clears throat> we just pray that as we leave here today, we go out these doors like someone who is redeemed, like someone who has been ransomed from sin, ransomed from kidnapping. We are no longer prisoners. And we thank you so much for that, God. In your precious son's name, we pray.